This podcast is brought to you by ChemPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. And StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. I am Ferranci. If you don't know me, now you do. Welcome. I'm joined by Kyle from Out of Spec, creator of Out of Spec and a driver of many cars. And on the Out of Spec podcast, we talk about all things electric and electric vehicle adjacent, as I like to say. And on this corner of the internet, we get to talk about all the new technologies and EVs that come on the market after we get to drive them or before we get to drive them, or maybe we haven't even driven them yet. Recently, we talked to a couple who drove a Volkswagen ID4 all the way from coast to coast, 3,000 miles, pulling a camper trailer, which was really cool. And today, Kyle is talking about a new, the 2024 VW ID4, which is not what those folks were driving, but has a lot of improvements that I think they really would have benefited from. So we'll link that episode in the description. I think it's a really great episode with Grant and Felicia. And Kyle, now you're going to tell us all about your experience driving the new 2024 VW ID4. Thank you. Welcome. How's it going? Great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Okay. So the new ID4 is partially new, but not completely new. And mm -hmm. it gets confusing. So um, Volkswagen does these things called PAs or, uh, it's like BMW's LCI or a facelift of a vehicle. And okay. like the ID4 is the most confusing facelifted vehicle because the Euro cars are on a little bit different track than the U S cars. And in the U S the big battery gets a facelift, but the small battery doesn't, which to me makes no sense at all. The, I think the small battery will get the facelift next year. I don't understand this anyway. Well, did they say why their reasoning yeah. is there? They didn't give me a real reason. No, it, it had something to do with the uh, European uh, infotainment uh, regulations. But I'm like, well, if you're already upgrading one, then it meets it. It didn't make much sense to me. I'm sure there's a reason, but it can't be a good one. Um, so anyway, but but here's the thing. I have been an ID4 fan pretty much since the beginning. I called it the happiest car on sale. It's just like a nice premium-ish for the price at least electric SUV. And when the ID4 launched, the Model Y was like fifteen or $20,000 more expensive than the ID4. So it was coming in as a German built, lower price than Tesla, but still good range, okay charging, and really good driver assistance. And I would say great comfort, really nice chassis, nice driving dynamics. I enjoyed them. They were not fast, but they were just a competent car. Uh, and since then, the entire auto market has flipped around where, you know, the Model Y has just come down in price significantly. Other competitors are coming onto the market now. Um, and it, it makes the ID4, it's been out since 2021. It's like, okay, it's time for an update. It's time for some new features. It's time to really dial in this car. And one thing we were hoping that Volkswagen would have gotten right from the beginning was software and infotainment. And while I was not its biggest critic, I certainly was not its biggest fan. And uh, thankfully for 2024, Volkswagen has completely revamped the entire infotainment system in the ID4. Uh, and not only have they updated the entire infotainment system, they have given it more power and they have now made it guaranteed that you get a better charging experience. And I'll explain that in a moment. So, uh, there are two versions of the ID4. There's an 82 kilowatt hour gross and a 62 kilowatt hour gross. Uh, I think it's 58 usable and 77 usable, respectively. And the um, the thing is, only the big battery is getting the new stuff. The old one gets <laughs> the old motor, the old infotainment, and it doesn't make much sense to me. But it retains the price point under forty thousand dollars starting, which is good, um, very good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but if you want the big battery and then you want all wheel drive, your, your pricing is coming up pretty high actually at that point. And we can share some of the pricing guides, but the cheapest big battery ID four you can get is 45 grand and the cheapest all wheel drive ID four with the big battery you can get is 49 grand. And the car I drove yesterday at the launch, I flew to California. I drove it for a few hours um, with my friend banked. We had a really good time. He's from green car reports. And then I blasted back here. 
the car I drove was $53,000 for a mid-spec all-wheel drive, which is $3,000 more than a Model Y performance. Just setting the mm. stage here. It okay. does qualify for the tax credit. Volkswagen claims it's the only foreign automaker that qualifies for the $7,500 tax credit. I don't know how that's possible because the Mercedes EQE SUV qualifies for the $7,500 tax credit, and that's built in mm -hmm. Alabama. This is built in Tennessee. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I I don't understand why they say they're the exclusive, I guess, non-American manufacturer getting the tax credit, but that's their claim, whatever. It gets the credit. That's all I care about. Um, and here's the thing. The car has had some majorly great upgrades. Now I've had the chance to drive the ID four with the updates. I drove the only one, the first one that they did as like a pre-production prototype in Europe six months ago, five months ago, something like that. A long time ago. It, feel, it feels like, and uh, that video has done really well. Hundreds of thousands of views, lots of interest. And so I, went to this uh, event, not really realizing what we were driving. I'm like, oh crap, I've already driven this car. What am I, why am I taking a day to go drive it again? Um, but it was really nice. It was great to see the US spec version. It was great to, you know, immerse myself with ID4. And when you drive ID4 in a vacuum, my impression, if you just review it as the ID4, it still is truly a great car. I mean, Colton, our colleague owns one. He loves it. I love it too. It's like a great car. If you just live with it, drive it, and now it's gotten even better. Um, but still, the price is a tough sell. So I think they're going to be a pretty good lease on these. That's where most how most of them are going. Before I go through all the changes and everything, Francie, do you have any questions or anything you'd like to bring up? Sure do. I've seen something interesting where um, folks, you know, I have the, the VF8 leased. And that's what I'm using as my daily driver. And some people are considering that option. And then they're like, or, you know, an ID4. And they're similar pricing. So my, I mean, I, I know my answer. If you're in between the VW ID4 and the VF8, what would you say? And for those that don't know, that's a VinFast, which is a Vietnamese electric yes. SUV. That's not very popular at all in the U.S. No. yet. What would I choose? I mean, I'd choose an ID. I, I like the ID4. I would drive an ID4 as my personal car and be very happy mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, I think them stressing that, I think it's just more important to say that you get the full seven hundred or $7,500 federal tax credit. Who cares how exclusive it makes you? As long yeah, as sure. it's, it's don't complicate things, right? With something that's already complicated. Uh, so it seems like the infotainment and the charging and the navigation are really key things that you noticed. And we're going to dive into all that. I don't think I have really any other questions besides I want you to tell me exactly what changed that you noticed and maybe something that you didn't notice as well. All the things that were surprising, satisfying, what you want to see next. Okay, so the biggest changes from a consumer standpoint are going to be the infotainment system. Everything in there is completely revamped. Again, only on the big battery cars, not the small battery. This is crazy. I don't get it. Uh, but the big battery car gets, honestly, a great infotainment system now. Of course, you get wireless CarPlay, Android Auto, all that stuff. But now it is fast as you can hit a button, the screen response. It's bam, bam, boom, 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 boom. It's great. Really nice. And it has... Now, finally, all three things that a long-range EV needs. And there are ID4 owners that are road-tripping them everywhere. We have a bunch of our viewers. You've done podcasts, like you mentioned, with one who towed with one across the country. And theirs was just a rear-wheel drive, which was mm -hmm. pretty cool. And so the new infotainment has fantastic EV route planning now. It's like they must have just gone to Porsche and said, we'll take whatever they put in the Taycan and put it in this. Because it's hmm. awesome. It calculates elevation, calculates all the different parameters. You can set your arrival at the charging station different than your destination. So I can say, get me to the charger at 3%. And it'll say, okay, here's how you get there at 3%. Charge until it tapers. Unplug. Do the out-of-spec style. You could tell it to do deeper charges. It's it's pretty, pretty slick. Uh, it's great. It also has on-route battery preconditioning automatically now and manual preconditioning, uh, which is interesting. And it gives you a little bar in the infotainment system. And I, I'm sure I can send you the photo to uh, put this in, but I also think I probably have the photo somewhere. It gives you a little bar to tell you how far along in your preconditioning you have gotten oh. uh, wow. and how much time it's going to take left to get to maximum battery performance. That's so, cool. 
yeah, for charging. So I think that's great. And it has plug-in charge, which came as an over-the-air software update to the 2023 model year, not 21 or 22. But if you had a US spec car, you get um, plug-in charge on EA. Uh, ISO Tell me what that means if I don't know what that means. Um, it's just as simple as it sounds. You plug into the charger, the vehicle charges, and it bills your account, um, you know, and all of that good stuff automatically. You don't have to fiddle with an app when you're standing in front of a high power charger. For your home charging experience, it's no different. But what it means is now you can finally go on a road trip or like give this car to your parents or your grandparents and tell them to go on a road trip and it'll take all the heavy lifting calculations out of the equation, which sure, is so or- needed. Use it if you're a rental company, which we know they're finding how hard that is to run uh, car rental companies with electric vehicles. But aspects like this make it so much easier for someone who's renting an EV might be for some reason the only option that they get or they decide, hey, I'm going to embrace EV lifestyle on this trip. They can just pull up and make the charging process so simple. Totally agree, 100%. And so, um, you know, on top of all of that, the all wheel drive system as well as the rear wheel drive car have upgraded power. The rear drive got the biggest change. They put the new APP 550 motor in the back, which is going in everything. I think we're getting in the buzz. The ID7 has it. This is getting it. It's a permanent magnet. Uh, primary axle, primary drive on this particular one. And that is, you know, just just different way that they do the magnets inside of the uh, rotor, different uh, windings for the stator, enhanced cooling, upgraded inverter. I'm still not sure if it's silicon carbide. I'm pretty sure it's just silicon IGBTs. But either way, it should lead to more efficiency, more regen capability. And uh, on the rear drive car, a significant bump in power. It's almost two seconds, zero to 60 less. The all-wheel drive car, I think it's now 335 horsepower. I'm pretty sure the battery is the limitation there, which is why it didn't get as much of a bump. But it's under five seconds, zero to 60, 4.9, very similar to like Model Y long range. I drove the all-wheel drive, thought it was pretty snappy and responsive. I've always liked the chassis on the ID4. It's very soft and floaty, but they actually, we took it up Angeles Crest and uh, I mean, I was full full send. You can back stability control off a little bit, and it just you know leans right over on the side. And you're just, but it's a great balance on the car. You can really get it to work. Some lift off over steer into some corners. So if you just need to rip, it's good at that. It's comfortable. It's got great driver assistance. Um, the travel assist function is amazing. Automatic lane changes, really good lane centering, capacitive mm-hmm. wheel. That doesn't really bug you. Stays out of the way. I've used it all over the world. And I really like it. And that's a lot of reviewers really trashed the ID4. Uh, I, again, was, uh, I, I thought it was a great car. I still think it's a great car. Now it's actually acceptable in the year 2024. It's got faster charging. They now make the SK battery as standard. Um, this is so weird, Francie, but last year, when they produced the big battery ID4s, you didn't know if you were going to get an LG battery or an SK battery. And Mm. the LG batteries only charged at 130 kilowatts. And I've gotten Mm. upwards of 190 kilowatts, almost 200 kilowatts on the SK battery. And you just didn't know. You'd have to check the window sticker. And it's not like Volkswagen told you. And it's like, which car are you going to buy? Are you getting a fast charging one or a slow charging one? We've had viewers that reached out and said, Kyle, I thought you said the Chattanooga cars charge so much faster. And I'm like, yeah, they do. And then they're like, oh, but my car only does 130 kilowatts. I'm like, what? Show me the sticker. And then they had the old battery in it, basically. Oh, my so, gosh. Interesting. That's who Ford uh, was, is partnering with SK for their battery manufacturing plant in Kentucky, mm-hmm. which I know was delayed. Yeah, so many people are partnering with them. I mean, becoming a huge supplier in the EV battery space. We should probably reach out to them as well and uh, just mm-hmm. get get some podcasts on battery stuff. I'd be fascinated. But overall, yeah. like now, now, you know, if you get a big battery 2024 model year, you get the good battery, you get great infotainment, get a more efficient drive and more power and everything else. Nothing else has really changed on the car. Little trim bits here and there. You get bigger wheels, better sound system only in the top trim. But I don't think many people are going to get the pro S plus, which is quite expensive. Um, mm. And again, I, I, I really think they need to work on the pricing of the car because uh, right now you put it up against the competition. It's more expensive and, and I would say less value uh, than before. I think the maximum range now is 292 miles in the EPA cycle. They didn't know if it was the two or five cycle. Um, Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I know that I was talking to Max recently about his trip to Kazakhstan and how the, they're somehow managing to get the ID four down to like 20,000 us dollars over there. So, I'm sure it's a very distinctly different market, but 
the price point of EVs is always something that we're looking to come down. Yep, absolutely. So, so you know, the updates were needed. I love the new infotainment system. Really great. Love. I've always liked the way they drive. Love the driver assistance. I like the look of the car. It's very unoffensive. It's quite happy. And, um, you know, I think uh, you got, you know, cool ambient lighting. All the same stuff from the previous car stand. Just little, mm-hmm. little updates, little tweaks here and there. If you have a 23, it's not the end of the world. Um, but I do think that the processing power, if you're in the market to buy one, really consider going for a 24 because, uh, backlit controls, uh, all that stuff is in there. Still same massaging seats, which are great. And, uh, now it's got plug and charge and it will have a North American charging standard adapter sometime soon. That was my next question. This of course doesn't come with the North American charging standard, the native J3400, uh, port in the EV that won't happen until 2025 models at the earliest with any automaker, but adapters are moving in. We will continue to cover the unfolding world of adapters as each automaker gets, gets access to them and then access to the Tesla supercharger network in North America. So stay tuned as that just whole new part of the industry unfolds and we'll experience its, its own birth. (laughs) Yeah. I I think uh, what was interesting is I sat in some presentations and, uh, about the car before I went for a drive, just a quick one. You know, it, everyone knows this is just a mid-cycle refresh. It's not like an exciting new car launch. But I think it was cool how uh, Volkswagen presented the entire group as being a force. They talked about Audi and Porsche and the other vehicles that uh, are along with Volkswagen. And um, I think the ID4 is actually the most popular selling Volkswagen in the U.S. is what they were saying. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I also drove a 1949 Beetle while I was there. That was more interesting than the ID4. So that was the first model year the Beetle was sold in the U.S. Its name was Benny, and I got taken for a drive. And, uh, you know, unsynchronized transmission, had to rev match, double double D clutch, all that good stuff. It was great. Uh, really enjoyed that. And, uh, cool. yeah, it, it's just always fun. I, I like hanging out with the Volkswagen guys. They're awesome. They're nerds. Uh, we talked a lot about my e-golf, maybe doing a battery recycling thing with Redwood. So always good ideas and things. And the car, yeah, my biggest issue with the ID4 is just the price. I can't wait to see what the lease numbers are because it's a great car, but it has to be cheaper than, or at least match Model Y. That is, you know, it's sort of mm-hmm. the, it was always the three series. Now it's the Model Y as being the benchmark in the category. Sure. And if I bring up this uh, Cox Automotive and Kelly Blue Book, just information about 2023 sales, we can see the VW ID4 got, is that, yeah, year to date sales, 37, almost 40,000 sold in 2023. And then out of VW, oh, that's their only, the only option then. The only electric option is ID4, Mm -hmm. yeah, in the US. There you go. They this should have brought cool the ID3. Too. You know, ID3 just went through a mid-cycle refresh. That would have been a good time for the PA to get the mm-hmm. US adaptations to pass crash. That would have been cool. But they didn't do it. So this is a, a nice refresh, only with the big battery, like you said. And just kind of like, you, yeah, again, the leases will keep coming in as automakers kind of aren't able to hit a really sweet spot with the price points to get more and more mass adoption. So... Yeah, it's like, do they need to compete on price or are the consumers going for the car? Because certainly if you, there's many of our viewers and many people will never consider buying a Tesla. So then it comes Mach-E, ID4, Blazer EV now, and a few others in the category. Um, And, you know, the ID4 becomes a lot more compelling when you remove the Model Y as an option. I can see it. That's a nice car. Nice drive. Nice day. Not much to say about it. Infotainment rocks now. No one can say it's got shitty software anymore. So that's that's good. good. Um, Unless it has the small battery, then it still has the same software. God damn it, Volkswagen. Come on. Small batteries (laughs) should get the same updates. They should. They should. Uh, My well, that was their strategy there. So we'll just wait for that to come in for the small battery so that everyone can benefit from these updates. And we'll see what comes with the 2025 model. Super cool. All right, yeah, glad get, that I, the only thing I wish I got to do while I was there was sample the sound system in the Pro S Plus. Because I've listened to the Beats sound system, I think it's branded as, and the ID5 in Germany. Uh, but the US gets a Harman Kardon branded system in ID4, and I have not experienced it. And that might be worth a couple grand if it's yeah. really a good system. But I'm not expecting like e-tron levels of just crazy banging sound system in that thing. Sound systems are important. And if you're paying tens of thousands of dollars for something, it should have a decent sound system. 
right? And ID4 kind of just doesn't. Huh. It's okay, but it runs out of steam like pretty quickly. Oh, really? Yeah, the standard system's never been great. That's that's yeah. like Colton's main issue with his ID4 because they never publicly charge it. They literally charge it on a 110 volt outlet at home. He's got Seriously. it lowered on big 22s. Like it looks awesome. It his ID4 looks great. And mm -hmm. Jess just drives it to the office and back. And she's on the highway. And I guess they use travel assist or whatever, but it's a great commuter, really great mm -hmm. commuter. But the one thing they want out of the car is the software doesn't even bother them. They just use CarPlay. But the one thing that bothers that they really wanted was a better, uh, better sound system. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty important. The So you can get it. You just got to pay for it only in the top, top spec. Mm. Mm. Downside. Love a good sound system. Love music. Okay, Kyle, anything else that you found surprising that you'd want people to know about with this kind of refresh of the VW ID4 2024 model? No, it was a good reminder to get in the car again. I, I drive Colton's from time to time. Whenever we need to make a video, I drove it for a plug-in charge. And, and just every time I get in that car, I just fit. I've always said this since the car came out. I can sit low. The steering wheel's great. The overall feel of the car is exactly what I'm looking for for this price category. And to be honest, every time I get in a Model Y, and you know, I, I own Teslas, I'm not against Tesla here, but every time I get into a Model Y, I just don't feel at home. I don't feel, and, and it's a very personal thing, but I don't get to sit low enough. I don't like the small steering wheel and the super fast ratio. It just feels a little bit mm. airy. I don't feel like mm -hmm. I'm in a a well, you know, crafted vehicle. And it's not to say the ID4 is anything like a Rolls Royce Spectre, but I sit low. It's got a great wheel, great chassis dynamics, you know, good body feel. Everything is just great for what I need. And it's always been one of those cars that just drives really well for me. And it's mm -hmm. it's a very personal thing because I know other reviewers that I trust and respect and really like and value their opinion and they hate the ID4. Uh, but for me, I, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I think I'm seeing a trend with you a little bit where you, I mean, obviously Tesla does a lot of things well and you get in and you drive it and you're like, oh man, Tesla does things better than anyone else. But then you get into like your Rivian or a VW ID4 and the design really seems to be something where you're like, oh, I just feel like at home in this car more than I do the Tesla, which I think with its minimal uh, appearance is is probably weighs into that a little bit. I know that you're thinking of all the technicalities too, but I do think there's an emotional pull. That's possible. You know, I'm, I'm sure there is, of course, but I, design doesn't play into me. For me, it's just all about seating position. And I just can't get comfortable in any Tesla except the Model 3. I mm -hmm. love the Model 3 seating position because you're right on the ground in that car. It's awesome. Uh, and uh, actually, Cybertruck, I was pretty comfortable in as well. Mm -hmm. But not X, not S, which I have both in the driveway right now and not why. But yeah, oh. I, I like the ID4. I've recommended it to people. We all know Alyssa's mm -hmm. sister had one. Uh, she she got rid of it because she wasn't able to charge it anymore. Her work charging got uh, decommissioned or something, just broke, I guess. And she's like, I hate going to EA every day. I'm like, nah, you can't blame me there. Her mom yeah, sure. has had two of them. My dad has owned three ID4s. Um, you know, are running it, through ID4s over there. Yeah, they've all been in the family, and that you know, it's just like it was a really nice car. And you know, it, it was even a better car when Model Y was fifteen or twenty thousand dollars more expensive, which mm -hmm. those roles have reversed. And that's really the only negative to say about the whole car is it's got more than enough range. It's now got route planning, preconditioning, great driver assistance, uh, plug and charge, everything you would need. It's just the price, so you're going to have to lease it. Hmm. Okay, good to know. That's pretty good guidance, I think, if someone is considering this, which I think a lot of people are. And yeah, okay, some good facelifts. Thanks, Kyle, for coming onto the podcast to tell us all about it. You're going to be on more and more lately with some more exciting things for the month of March, ending out February. So thanks for your time and energy. Thank you, everyone, for plugging in with us today on the Out of Spec podcast. Make sure to let us know that you enjoyed it. You know how. Contribute to the conversation. Thanks for being here. And we will see you next time on the next episode of the Out of Spec podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.